This morning's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew and its angel messages. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Jesus woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Judy. So um, before I start to speak, I just want to explain that um, Richard has not got some new religious headgear that he's been wearing in the corner. You can't see him at the back, but Richard has been sitting playing the piano like this this morning. Okay, so I'd like to introduce you to our new blankets. Okay, woohoo! Look, you can see the team at the back have got them as well. Woohoo! So these are not just for people who are leading the service or sitting on the sound desk. These are available for anybody who's feeling a little nippy and would like to go and get one to put them over their legs or around their... Thank you, Gazella. Put them over their legs or around their shoulders or over their head or however else imaginatively you'd like to wear your blanket. Uh, you're very welcome to do so. Uh, so there aren't enough for everybody, but there are now 20 blankets available every Sunday morning to keep you comfortable. Okay. <laughs> And I highly recommend them, I have to say. I highly recommend them. However, I'm not going to preach with one on. Good, but I'm not going to remove my gloves, I'm afraid. <laughs> so, there we go, brilliant. More blankets being handed out. I like it. Okay, let's pray, shall we, as we uh, come to God's word this morning. Father, we are lost in wonder, love, and praise. And even in the silence of this moment, we offer you our wonder, our love, and our praise. Lord, thank you that by your Spirit you are here with us now. And as we think about that name of Jesus, Emmanuel, so we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would indeed be with us this morning. We pray that you'd speak to us and even more, that you would meet with us. That in this time and this place, we would know your presence, your power, your refreshing. For we ask this in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. So here we are on Advent 4. We've been journeying through this season of Advent, a season of preparation, and we now draw even closer to Christmas. Uh, to Christmas. Uh, we are, of course, nowhere near uh, this year, uh, as we sometimes are by this point. Sometimes we're doing Advent 4, and then we're racing into Christmas. This week, we've got a whole week uh, before we get to Christmas Day. But one of the ways we've been preparing is by looking at the promised one and at some of the names that are given to Jesus in Scripture. So here's the first little test of this morning. Who can remember the three names that we've looked at on the first three Sundays of Advent? Preachers are not allowed to engage in this exercise. Can anybody remember? Preferably in the right order, but I'll take anything. Sorry? Yahweh. 
is the name of God, Ted. Well done. <laughs> Light of the world. Brilliant. Stuart can remember as far as last week. Well done, Stuart. Brilliant. <laughs> can anybody go back further? Sorry? The word. Jesus is the word. Yes. Sorry? Prince of Peace. Yes. So that was two weeks ago. Very good. Mighty God. There we go. Excellent. We got there in the end. So we have thought about Jesus as mighty God, Prince of Peace, as light of the world. And this morning we're thinking about Jesus as Emmanuel. And I was going to ask you before I put that slide up, uh, what Emmanuel means. But now you know the answer. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. Excellent. So that's what we're looking at this morning. So let's have another little test. Uh, let's begin with a bit of Bible knowledge. Who knows where this verse is from in the Bible? You don't have to get chapter and verse, just like, you know, vaguely. Isaiah? Isaiah? Is that where it's from? Matthew? Ah. Oh. So we've got something Old Testament, something New Testament. It's both. Oh, we've got the swat on the front row here. Very good. <laughs> it, is <laughs> it is indeed both. So you'll see if you go back. That's right. Thanks, Nia. So the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. That's Isaiah chapter 7. And then indeed, as somebody just said, Matthew quotes that verse from Isaiah uh, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Really interesting that Matthew uh, specifies there what that means, and we'll come back to that a little later on. So that's two places uh, where we find the name Emmanuel in Scripture. Anybody got any idea how many more places we get the word Emmanuel in Scripture? Sorry? That is almost the right answer, John. <laughs> it's not quite the right answer. Uh, the answer is that there is one more reference to Emmanuel, but it's in the same passage, effectively, in Isaiah. So it's in Isaiah chapter 8. Uh, there is another reference. Uh, its outspread wings will cover, will cover the breadth of your land, O oh, Emmanuel. Okay? So effectively, it's the same passage from Isaiah, and we've only got those three references. So I suppose it's that one reference in Isaiah, then quoted um, in Matthew. But Emmanuel means God with us. And as Christians, that name for Jesus, Emmanuel, goes to the very heart of the good news of what Christmas is. It goes to the very heart of what we call the incarnation of God becoming man, of God coming to live on earth. It goes to the very heart of the good news. This past week, I have spoken with two children whose dad died earlier this year. I've spoken with a couple who lost a baby a few weeks ago. I've spoken with someone whose adult son has uncharacteristically not been in touch with his parents for a couple of months. I've heard of our friend Elaine being really poorly in a hospital thousands of miles from home. I've heard, as you may have done, of a lady uh, who lived on Warfield Park who was tragically killed in an accident on Ascot High Street on Friday. And I've heard of a lady from my old church who died this week as the result of complications to a very routine and relatively minor operation. All of that's just in a week. And that's just the people that I've spoken with or heard of. So that's let alone the families and the community who have lost four children in a tragedy on an iced lake. The two children whose mother died as a result of a crush in Brixton or the thousands of people from Ukraine and other nations whose lives have been devastated by war this year. And every one of you, if we were to go around the room, would be able to add someone or something to that list. 
So I don't want to depress us this morning, but I do want to be real about the pain and suffering of the world that we live in. Sometimes we become even more aware of that as we come in the run-up to Christmas. There's no reason why we should, really. But for those who lose loved ones, for example, as uh, some of the people I've just mentioned, we're more aware of it, aren't we, in the week just before Christmas. We live in a painful and broken world. Those around us live in a painful and broken world. And what we most need to know in the midst of that is that God is not distant. God is not some far-flung being who has nothing to do with our lives. But God is very close. In fact, he is with us. He is Emmanuel. The virgin shall be with child, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So simply put, Emmanuel is actually just a name. Last week, Andy gave us a little of the context of Isaiah. And in that passage in the Old Testament, the name Emmanuel was given to a child as a sign that Judah would receive relief from the attacks by Israel and Syria. The name simply symbolized God was still with them. As you know, names have significance, and names in some cultures have even more significance, perhaps, than they do in our own. And so in this Hebrew culture, that name symbolized for the people of Judah uh, that God was still with them. He had not forgotten them, and God would deliver his people. And then in the New Testament, as we've said, we hear, we hear Matthew uh, quoting Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14 as a prophecy that was fulfilled in the Old Testament, but to which Jesus brings greater fulfillment. There are a number of prophecies like that where we can see that historically there were things that happened, but then actually Jesus was the greatest fulfillment uh, of those words. So Emmanuel means that God would dwell among his people. Up to this point, the Israelites had kind of seen this, but God was sort of contained to the temple, to the Holy of Holies, to the Ark of the Covenant. But when Jesus came, everything changed. Many of you will know the message version of the Bible and may be familiar with Peterson's translation of John chapter 1 and verse 14. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Emmanuel means just that. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. In Jesus, God is now our neighbor, if you like. He is with us. He is right beside us. That's what Emmanuel means. It means God coming in right amongst us. It means God coming into the pain and suffering of a broken world. It means God coming alongside those who've tragically lost loved ones this week. It means God coming alongside those who have got difficult relationships going on in their families. It means God coming alongside those who are battling cancer or pneumonia or whatever else it is. Emmanuel, God with us, God amongst us, God alongside us. And so Jesus hears, uh, sorry, Joseph, I did the same as you, <laughs> Joseph hears this promise to his dream and it changed everything for him. His perception of God was shattered, not only for him, but for the entire nation of Israel. We don't actually hear very much more of Joseph, though Alan can do a very good impression of Joseph. We had Alan at Taste of the, what did we call yesterday? Taste of Christmas. Alan was dressed up as Joseph. He had a suitable tea towel on his head and a donkey in his hand. His donkey appeared a little small for him to ride, though, but, um, or even for Mary to ride. But anyway, that's enough of that. That was yesterday. So we don't hear very much more of Joseph in the Gospels. He's more famous for what he wasn't than for what he was. He's more famous for not being Jesus' natural father than uh, for 
all that we do know about his life. But one thing is for sure, and that is that Joseph's life was changed forever by that dream he had that night when the angel appeared to him and told him what was going on. Joseph's life was changed forever by that uh, that's recorded in Matthew chapter 1. And just as his life and Mary's life and later the disciples' lives were changed forever, so can our lives be changed too by Emmanuel, God with us. And so quite simply this morning, I want to remind us that God is with us, that God understands, that God helps. Emmanuel shows us that we have a God that understands. He has walked in our shoes. He has felt what we've felt, and he understands our pain. I wonder whether any of you know the ancient Don Moyne song which came to mind as I was preparing this. He walked where I walked, where I walk. He stood where I stand. He understands. He knows my frailty. Emmanuel means that God understands what we're going through. He has lived on this earth. No, he hasn't lived in the 21st century. He hasn't lived with all of the things that absolutely come into our lives every day. But people still died in the first century in Palestine. People still got really ill in the first century in Palestine. And Jesus wept. John's Gospel tells us that Jesus wept in the face of such tragedy. The uniqueness of the Christian faith is that we follow a God that has walked in our shoes and understands what we are going through. The name of Jesus, which is Emmanuel, shows us that God is not a remote being that's uninterested and unaffected by what's happening around us. Rather, he is a God who is willing to experience all of that himself. He's willing to come to this cursed, fallen planet and to suffer because of his love for us. And that, my friends, is incredible. No other religion has a God who is willing to suffer for his people, a God that can so deeply and uh, compassionately identify with his creation and with his people. Emmanuel means there is a God who understands. But it also means that God helps. God doesn't understand this just to say, ha, I know what you're going through. God understands this so that he can help us and to strengthen us. You see, God didn't just come and walk in our shoes so that he could kind of sympathize with us or any of that. He came so that he could help us out of the mess in our lives. For whatever reason, God has chosen to respond to the human predicament, not by waving a magic wand to make evil and suffering disappear, but by absorbing it in person. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood, wrote John in the prologue to his gospel. And in the face of suffering, words don't suffice, maybe, We need something more. We need to know that God is with us. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer put it, only a suffering God can help. And so Matthew's gospel begins with this assurance that God is with us. Matthew's gospel is the only one that picks up on that prophecy from Isaiah and says that Jesus will be called Emmanuel, God with us. And where does Matthew's gospel end? Have a think. Think Easter. Think Ascension. Think the Great Commission. At the end of Matthew's gospel, Jesus stands and he says to his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And... I will be with you always. In the first chapter and the last chapter of Matthew's gospel, we get that assurance of God's faithfulness, 
that he is with us, that he will be with us always. Matthew frames his gospel in that context. And so this Christmas, know that God is with you. Know that God is with your friends who are grieving. Know that God is with your friends who are in pain. Know that God is with those who are struggling to hold up the NHS in times of crisis. Know that God is with us here. Know that God will be present as we gather to worship him tonight and on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day and as we go into next year. Know that God is Emmanuel, God with us. And know that that means that he understands and that he helps us, that he comes alongside us, that he moves into our neighborhood and he is God with us. And the challenge for all of us as well is not just to know that as an assurance and an encouragement for ourselves, but to share that with others who need it. So this Christmas, would you help others to know those truths too? That God is Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.